Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Today we bring you part 11 in the abandoned repeater site series. And what we're showing you today is the uh, the end shots that we had of the new solar monitoring panel. Now this is back at uh, Worldwide Headquarters and we need to get this installed in the repeater shack uh, that uh, we, uh, we built this for. So we need to uh, transport that over. We also had a load of gravel to lay down around that shack so it won't be quite so muddy. What we're looking at here next are some of the screws and some of the uh, screw, shall we say, holders uh, that uh, we use on the 19 inch racks. Those clips slide in from the side and they ultimately uh, will allow those screws to anchor the solar monitoring panel to the rack itself. So here we see we're uh, beginning that process of fitting it, making sure that those clips are in the right place and uh, getting that installation started. Uh, again, we were really chuffed to get this panel installed. It looks amazing and uh, getting it installed will allow us at a glance to be able to know exactly where we are from a solar charging standpoint. Um, as some of you may know if you've been watching the series, we don't have mains installed at the shack. We just have the solar at this time. We've got a couple of 29 series batteries down in the bottom. And the solar panel at, at this point has done a wonderful job. We haven't come even close to running out of power anywhere uh, in the shack. So again, the monitoring panel will give us an at-a-glance look of the voltage coming in and the amperage going out to the batteries to help bring them up in uh, voltage and so on. So we've got the, uh, the panel basically installed at this point. Now we need to create a, a little bit of some adjustments on the solar panel wiring itself. We had the uh, solar panel wiring going to the test rig you see in the background. And so what we're doing here is we're getting the wires ready for some eyelets so that we can crimp those on and then attach those to the actual uh, volt meter uh, coming in uh, to, the, uh, to the panel. So uh, uh, we're crimping some eyelets there so that we can begin that process. Uh, we, looks like we get the black there. Don't need the neutral in this case, which is the green. We just need the black and the white. Black will be ground, white will be hot. So uh, we're just finishing up putting on those eyelets so that we can attach the solar panel to the back of the solar monitoring panel. So we're just finishing that up here. We're doing a little bit of crimping. AC4DM brought his trusty crimpers. Uh, again, uh, got some age on them, but man, <laughs> when you have something that works, why change it? And uh, so he's uh, putting the big crimp here on this eyelet so we can begin the installation of this wire into the rack. Now we're actually going to come in from the top right corner in the back of the rack itself and then come in and uh, connect it to the panel on the back side and this will get the, the wire or the cable out of the way as well as fished in there where we need it behind this uh, monitoring panel. So that's what we're doing here is beginning that process of getting that cable into the rack itself in a much more um, uh, professional way and out of the way as well. So uh, my hand just uh, shot in there to start pulling it in a little bit and then we'll start attaching that to the back of the monitoring panel. You can see uh, the wiring we already had completed there on the back of the panel and uh, uh, we just need to attach those two eyelets to the back of the voltage meter so that we can actually monitor the voltage coming in. It's amazing. Uh, you can actually develop power on these solar panels even on a cloudy day. Uh, it just won't be as high, but as long as the voltage is higher than what the battery is set to, then uh, we have the opportunity at least to, uh, to uh, charge up those batteries. So here we're taking off the, the nuts on the back. Uh, where the uh, the black and the red leads are already there going into the solar charger and we're going to attach the white and the black leads 
uh, to that same meter and then put the nuts back on. So just getting that uh, properly installed and fitted. And uh, hopefully I have enough cable there where everything should go in nicely. These kinds of projects, folks, were a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from just doing the solar install for this particular uh, abandoned repeater site, or what we call our secondary site, which in some ways will uh, be just as functional as our primary site. So we call it a secondary site, but in a lot of ways, it could be just as easily a primary site. And we do have plans for installing D-Star, six meters, 10 meter repeater, if we can get that project uh, going lot of logistics with that project as well as linking this repeater with our primary repeater that way you can come in on this repeater get linked to the other so we've got still a lot of plans as far as what we're going to install in this particular shack this was just uh, getting some power in there since we've not had the best of luck of getting the shack hooked up to mains So it looks like AC4DM is almost done with that second lead, uh, which is the hot lead in this case coming from the panel. And uh, we're just finishing up on the back side here. Now, this wasn't the only thing that we were doing on this particular work day. And that reminds me, uh, uh, our club uh, has scheduled work days. Uh, we have two a month. We have one at our 88 site, which we call our 88 site, our primary site where one of our repeaters is. We have another work day at this, the abandoned repeater site. Uh, one every month so that we can do the maintenance, check the batteries and so forth. Sometimes we have some impromptu work days to take it a little bit further. So now we're looking at the front of the panel, of course. We've got voltage coming in. Notice it's up around 20. This is without a load, though. We don't actually have the batteries connected at that point, so the voltage was quite high. This was on a cloudy day. It really uh, was not generating that kind of voltage. That would be an uh, unconnected or, or unloaded panel. So you can see the voltage coming in, but it had nowhere to go. So what we're doing now is we're taking from the other side of the panel, which is the actual uh, cabling from the amp meter, amperage meter, and now we're connecting to the batteries down at the bottom so that the solar panel uh, can go back to charging those batteries. So uh, we do a diagonal pattern here. The red will go to the front post of the first battery. The black will go to the back post of the second battery. That way uh, the, the batteries in essence are used as a single source and will be balanced as the current comes in and tops those batteries off. So we're just finishing up that connectivity and then it's a matter of just checking the gauges one more time on the front to make sure that the installation went well. So the good thing about this particular installation it's uh, a, pretty much a one-time installation and once we have this done then we can uh, move on to other things within the shack like those other repeaters and the linking system that we want to do. We've also taken the cat controller out of the uh, picture for the moment uh, and we need to do a little bit of programming there so that we can do announcements and uh, do a proper ID and so forth. At the moment the repeater is doing a, a CW ID which there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of repeaters do a CW ID but uh, we have some bigger plans for that as well. So uh, that cat controller uh, will probably be the subject of another video coming up. Uh, for some of you that are kind of new to the hobby, what is a cat controller? We're going to show you that a cat controller can do a great many things uh, when it comes to voice IDs and the like. Weather IDs, time IDs, all kinds of good stuff. Just about finished hooking up. There we go. Now we're looking at the outside of the shack. We've got the rack installed. You'll notice some new gravel going around that shack. Uh, KK4 JPX brought a, a truckload of gravel, and uh, he and KK4 uh, YUG spread the gravel around the shack so that, again, we wouldn't be stepping in the mud. Still a little bit uh, wet up that way after a rain, and uh, just the drip from the roof, for instance, creating some ruts. So we wanted to get some gravel down. You can see the wider gravel. I had bought some from uh, a big box store, but we actually bought a, uh, uh, a truckload full just to get most of the gravel in and around the shack and we'll finish up on the other side. Folks, look for uh, these kinds of projects for your club and uh, if you can do maintenance once a month, get some of your more active members out there to do those maintenance activities. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to take this on and rebuild this, uh, this repeater site from uh, the ground up, minus the tower, the tower was already there. But look for these kinds of opportunities. 
I'm KY4 BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Hope you enjoyed the video. Progress continues to move along. 73s.